What's up guys, how are you all doing? I'm Paul the Tech Giant and welcome back to the channel where today I'm going to be unboxing and testing out this Luva Build 55 OLED TV. Now I've just probably pronounced that completely wrong. Reason for that is I've never had any actual dealings with this manufacturer. So I've got to say a massive thanks to Peter Tyson for kindly sending over this TV for testing, which has allowed me to make this video. Now, if you like what you see and you want to purchase this TV from Peter Tyson, they do offer free delivery, free five year warranty, and they also offer finance. Now, if this TV isn't the one for you, then don't worry. They have a massive selection of other TVs from all the other major manufacturers. But not only that, they have an amazing selection of other AV equipment, such as amps, speakers, cables, you name it, they've got it, and some real top-end stuff. So please head on over to their website, take a look at see what they've got, and maybe give me some suggestions of things that you'd like to see me test out on the channel. So the way that we're gonna do this video then is we're gonna get the TV unboxed, we're gonna take a look at all the supplied accessories, take a look around the back of the TV at all the inputs and outputs, then we're gonna get this bad boy wall mounted. Then we're gonna get it set up and test out and see exactly what it's like. So let's first start off then by taking a look around the outside of the box. So as we can see, we have the make and model number just there. Then moving across, we have an outline image of the TV itself. Moving down from that, and we can see it says Netflix, Prime Video, and YouTube. Moving to the top of the box, and then we have our energy ratings, which come in at a G. Next up, let's take some measurements of the box. And for only a 55 inch TV, it is a whopper. Just look how thick it is. So let's start off then with the depth. So if you come in close, we can see it is approximately 36 centimeters or just over 14 inches deep. Next, let's take a look at the length and that comes in at 141 centimeters or 55 and a half inches. And finally the height, and we are looking at 96 centimeters or approximately 38 inches. Right, let's now get this TV unboxed. And you know what? I am really excited because it's a manufacturer I've never had any dealings with. Just don't know what to expect. So got me scissors, got these bands. Let's get these things cut. So as you can see, we've got a few bits on top there and uh, start taking those out and we'll take a closer look in just a minute. So something quite weighty there. Nice box of bits, a few other uh, bits and bobs there. Some real thick polystyrene. <laughs> the size on that, that's crazy. So uh, yeah, it is well packaged. I'm guessing maybe that's the base of the stand, very heavy indeed. And again, if you come in close, you can see just how well packaged that is. Look at that. So uh, hopefully it won't be bent like I've had uh, previous uh, TVs. And this being an OLED, it should be nice and thin. And if you come in closer, get to see just how thin this OLED TV is. Right, and now I've got to call upon the assistance of my daughter. Give me a hand, lift this out of the box. We don't want to damage it, so uh, taking it steady. Right, now that we successfully got it out of the box, let's take a look around the back of the TV. And I've got to say it, first impressions, you can see that this is a quality bit of kit. So starting off at the top, we've got the logo just there and this matte black finish, and it does look really premium. Moving down, and the quality theme continues. As you can see all over the back, we have this cloth, and it does look really, really nice. I'm liking the look of this already. Moving across, and we can see all these metal bits all across the back. What are they? Well, they are magnets, and they are to attach these plastic covers. So as we can see, we've got matching bits on the back, and those covers will go on like so to cover up all the bits that you do want to see when you are putting this on the stand. So once again, a very nice premium design there. Moving across to this label, and we've got some treats in store. We have Dolby Atmos, Dolby Vision, 
DTS HD and Freeview Play. So that is great news. Just moving up from that then, and we can see our port there for our power cable. Then moving down more to the middle, and it looks like we have some cable management. Moving across to the right hand side, and we come to the first of our inputs and outputs. So we have satellite, TV aerial, HDMI 3, HDMI 2, which is eARC, HDMI 1, common interface service, and audio out, LAN, USB, which is 2.0, and then we have a connection, which is for one of their own soundbars. Moving over to the right hand side, and we have two further USBs, which are 3.0 and HDMI 4. Now, when it comes to all four HDMIs on this TV, they are 2.1, but sadly, they are only good for 4K 60 Hertz gaming. Right, let's now take a look at the supplied accessories. So first starting off then, well, we've got the plastic covers, which I've already shown you. But again, you can see the quality here. So we've got this nice felt on the back there. So it's not gonna scratch up the back of the TV when you put them on. Moving on, and we have the first part of the tabletop stand. And again, I've got to say it, just feeling it, you can feel that it is proper good quality. So uh, yeah, that's gonna look nice. And we're gonna actually build up the stand in a separate video. So I've uh, got another piece there, bit of plastic, with looks like a magnet on it as well. Then we have what looks to be a cable tidy. So uh, yeah, that's handy that that's included. Then we have, I'm guessing, another part of the stand. Nice bit of weight of that, that's metal. Lovely matte finish on that. Looks premium again. Then we have this bit, which is a uh, mega weighty. I'm guessing this is gonna be the bottom of the stand. A massive chunk of metal there, again. Lovely finish on that, real solid. Rubberized feet, yeah, real good build quality there. And then we have this uh, accessory box. So let's uh, pop this open. So we've got some instructions there, do's and don'ts our energy rating stickers. Then we have the remote control. So let's take a look at this. Whew, Jesus, that is a decent remote. The feel on that, real, real weighty. Uh, I can't say I've ever felt a remote control that heavy before. It is a bit long though, if I'm being honest. I mean, look at the size on that. I mean, like, yeah, gotta be careful when you're swinging it around. But yeah, let's uh, come in close. So we've got Black up the top there. Again, feels nice, probably will scratch up. But yeah, this, this is metal. This isn't plastic. This is a metal remote. Lovely and soft on back there. So again, that's not gonna get scratched up. That's uh, again, like a very soft rubber. Really nice feeling that is. So we've got the logo there. Oh, look at that, a shortcut to YouTube. I'm liking this already. Freeview Play, uh, Raccoon TV, Deezer, Netflix, Prime Video, that looks nice there. I'm wondering if that lights up. That looks really nice, that uh, like scroll wheel there. Uh, obviously, our number buttons, play, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, looks really, really nice. I, I just can't get over the feel of that. That is, without a shadow of a doubt, the best feeling remote I've ever held. Moving on then, and uh, what else do we have in this box? Got some more advertising stuff there to do with their sound bars and speakers. Um, Allen key, a few little bits and bobs. I'm guessing again, this is gonna be to do with uh, setting up the stand. Looks like a maybe a blanking plug for that connection on the back of the TV for where you can connect up their sound bar. Some screws there, instruction manuals, different languages and instructions there for the tabletop stand. Then finally moving over, we have two power cables there. Not interested in that one because I am in the UK. So obviously I'm gonna pick out the one with the UK three pin plug. And ooh, seems like a nice long power cable. And obviously as we've seen on the back of the TV, it is detachable, so that is a great start. But let's measure the power cable anyway and see what we are dealing with, even though you can swap it out for a longer one. So this comes in at a very generous, by the seems of it, 2.45 meters. Right, so what I've just done, I've quickly gone ahead and installed my wall mounting brackets. 
And if you do want to wall mount this, then you may be interested to know the measurements between the holes. So the holes left to right, that is a distance of 30 centimeters and top to bottom is 20 centimeters. Now, unfortunately, due to the design of my wall mount and brackets, they will hang down a little bit at the bottom. So not looking too pretty, but it is what it is at the end of the day. And obviously I have to test a wide range of TVs and uh, got to have wall mount and brackets to accommodate them all. So anyway, let's get this TV up on the wall. Right, we've now got the TV up on the wall and all connected to the mains. And as you can see, just at the bottom there, we've got this little circle, which has a standby light in it, which indicates that we've got power and we are good to go. So let's turn on with the remote for the very first time. Now, because this is a manufacturer I've never had any dealings with, what I think we'll do is run through the setup process. And first of all, we need to select our language and English is the one that I'm gonna pick. Next up, it's telling us to connect to the internet, so I need to connect to my router and go on to the next step. Now I'm all connected to the internet, it's now saying to select our country. Next up, it's asking us to select our primary input source, and for this, I'm gonna select HDMI 1. Next, we come to the bit that we all dread, and that is the terms and conditions, where we pretty much sign our life away. So I'm going to accept all and press on OK. Moving on, and we're now given the option to set up an account, or we can skip this process. But I'm going to go ahead and set up an account. Now that the account's been created, I'm being asked to name the TV. So we've got options such as living room, bedroom, guest room, game room, or smart TV. I'm just going to go to living room, and move on to the next step, which is now asking us to enter our postcode. Now that I've entered my postcode, it is recommending Netflix, but I'm not interested in that. I'm gonna go down to enjoy your TV. There we go, we're all set up, and that is the installation complete. So we now got the TV all up and running, and uh, straight away, just gone to turn up the volume, and nothing seems to be happening. Now I've got an idea what might be going on here. So I showed you earlier on that we had this little bit in the uh, supplied accessories. That seems to go into the port where you can connect this TV to a soundbar. And seeing there has got cables coming out the back, basically looping back into itself, I've got a funny feeling that I need to plug this into the back of the TV. So hopefully it will make the sound work. Let's give it a try. Right, so now that we've got that out of the way, I've plugged that little adapter in the back of the TV. Let's see if that has worked. Turn up the volume. Hey, presto, it now works. Now that is a little bit weird if you ask me. I would have expected that to have already been pre-installed in the back of the TV and to be removed if you want to add a soundbar rather than adding it to just get the general TV speakers to work from out of the box. But there you go. Right, let's now take a look at the design of this TV. So first starting off around the side then, and we can see just how thin this TV is. Just check that out. That is thinner than my hairline. So moving on down, and we can see that it does actually get a bit thicker. This is where all the speakers, all the guts of the TV is housed. So it is gonna be a bit thicker down this bottom end. But as you can see, it is curved. So when you move around, you can't really see it, which is nice. And as we can see, just there, we do have easy access to one of the HDMIs and two of the USB ports. Moving around to the front, and we can see just how thin those bezels are just there, which is very nice. And if we move to the bottom of the TV, excuse those bits, they are the brackets, nothing to do with the TV itself and we have this indicator. Now this does look very nice. I love the design of that. And this will change color, obviously, depending on the status of the TV. Obviously green for on, and uh, there are other colors depending on what is going on. And one I will show you in just a minute, a great little feature, but you can turn that off if you think it's a little bit distracting. Now moving up to the top right-hand corner of the TV, and you may be able to notice this little bit of branding. 
And whilst the brand in itself does look nice, I'm not too keen on the location. Looks a little bit weird sticking out there at the side. Personally, I'd prefer things to be a bit more symmetrical. Right, let's now take a look at some of the menus and settings. So once again, grabbing the massive long remote control, gonna press on the home button just once. And there we are, nice and snappy straight into the home menu. Now, as we can see at the top left-hand corner, we do have some shortcuts there. So we can search, we've got source, settings, we've got our Wi-Fi there, access to our account, also our voice search. Now we have a voice search button on the remote, but if we go in there as well, there we go, we've got a couple of options there for different voice assistants. Coming back out of that by pressing the back button just once, once again, pretty snappy. And we can see that we're presented with some suggestions of things to watch. Moving down and we have some apps that are pre-installed on the TV. And if we go to my apps, we can see there exactly the offering that we are given that are pre-installed. So we've got some of the family favorites there. So we've got Netflix here in the UK. We've got BBC iPlayer, ITVX 4, 5, which is great. We've got all those ones that you'd expect to see. YouTube, which obviously we've got that nice shortcut for there on the remote, which is great. Moving down, you've got things like Disney Plus there, uh, Prime Video and Apple TV Plus. And just scrolling down, you can see that there is a nice offering. Backing out of that just once again, if we move down, we've got things that are featured. We've got suggested movies, comedy, drama, soaps, all that sort of jazz, as we get on most TVs these days. Then we come to the app store as well. So if the pre-installed stuff isn't for your uh, liking, then we can go in here and there are even more to choose from. So just a quick scroll through there. As you can see, we've got games, music, news, weather, all sorts. I'm sure there is something there for everyone. Coming back out of that once again, and again, it's just more offerings of things that you may like to watch. Next, let's take a look at the settings. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you a great feature as well at the same time. So I'm gonna press on this button just here. And as you can see, we've got the settings option just there and audio only. Now, if you just take notice of the light just there at the bottom of the TV is currently green. And if we press on audio only, that has now turned blue. And as you can see, screen has gone off, but we still have the audio. So I think that's a great little feature there. I'm sure many people will use that, but what we're gonna do, we're gonna head on down to the settings now. And as you can see, we are starting off there with the picture settings. Let's take a look at the picture modes. So we've got standard, we've got cinema day, cinema night, dynamic, and sports. Coming back out of that, We've got a uh, aspect ratio there, smart scene. So recognize the current scene and enhance the pitch quality. Then we have game mode. Now I'm sure this is gonna go down a right treat. So, as it says, reduces input lag and improves responsiveness, which is great to have. Moving down from that, and yes, we have auto low latency mode. So there, auto low latency mode and enables the best latency setting to be automatically set, allowing for smooth lag free, uninterrupted viewing, and interactivity. So once again, great news for gamers. So moving down, we come to the picture mode settings, and if we go in here, we can adjust things like the OLED light. If we click on that, I'm sure people want to know what you can do. So you've got off, low, medium, and high. Then we've got brightness, contrast, color saturation, sharpness, adaptive contrast, and then we have our motion settings as well and uh, clear motion there, noise reduction, so on and so forth. Then we have also our expert settings. Again, messing around with the color there, white balance, so on and so forth. Coming back out and then we've got our OLED calibration. So this is gonna do, again, I imagine a pixel refresh if you wanna keep that image looking tip top. Coming out of picture and moving on down to sound. So sound mode, we have standard theatre, music, speech, late night and sports. We will check those out in just a bit and give it a real good sound test. Then we have Dolby Atmos. Then we have options there for headphones, sound mode settings as well. So uh, we can apply the sound modes to all the sources. We've got equalizer as well. Look at that, yeah, real fiddle with that sound. That's great to have. Wall mount, so this will be, if we wanna wall mount it as we have here, we can toggle that on or off. I'm gonna to toggle that on, obviously we've got it wall mounted, and that's gonna adjust the same to suit, be it on the wall or on the tabletop stand. Then we have auto volume control and uh, reset. 
Moving down from that, and we're going to go into speakers, and we've got audio output, so we can choose where we want the audio to come from, and we can adjust other parameters there as well. Coming back to the main settings, then we have network, which I'm pretty sure is self-explanatory, so that's all to do with connecting up to the internet, and uh, also Bluetooth is in there as well. Then we have our accessibility settings, so in there we've got audio type, so we uh, got stuff there for the visually impaired as well, and subtitle settings, which you can uh, fiddle around with. So we've got on, off there, and uh, primary subtitles, so you've got different languages, and uh, secondary subtitle as well. Moving on down then to the system settings, so we've got time, we've got things there for the timers. So if you want the TV to shut off after a certain amount of time, you can do. We've got parental controls, language and location, voice service there, application settings, settings there for our HDMI control, as you can see. And if we back out of that, and then we get down to our advanced settings. So now we can edit the TV name if we wish. So uh, yeah, you can actually write in anything that you want in there. And then we come down to to DR Plus and Time Shift. Now, this TV has a great inbuilt feature, and that is a one terabyte hard drive. Yes, a one terabyte hard drive. So with this TV, you can record your TV shows, and not only can you record hours of them, you can even pause live TV as well, which is real handy. I think that is absolutely amazing, and I'm sure loads of people would use that. Moving down from that, we've got option there to toggle on or off for that power indicator just at the bottom of the TV. Input labels, again, we can uh, change those to whatever we want. So maybe HDMI 1, we could put that to maybe PlayStation 5 or something like that. Then we've got a setup wizard. Then we have sports mode, auto detection. Then we have things like fast power on and uh, yeah, a few other things there to toggle around with. And then we've got the uses mode, home or store mode. And finally, we have this switch off curtain. So we can adjust that to whatever we want. So uh, if we want to, for it to close down slowly, we can do that or not even have it come on at all. Now coming out of that, and finally we have support, and if we go down to system upgrade, that is where we can toggle on or off for the auto firmware upgrade, and we can manually check for updates as well. Right, now it's the time to check out the picture. So what I've done, I've fired up a piece of 4K footage, just standard dynamic range for the moment, and yeah, looks pretty nice. Now, don't get me wrong, as far as the brightness goes, I wouldn't say it is the brightest of the OLEDs that I have ever seen, especially with the new 2023 models that are knocking about, but I would say it's more than adequate for the average user, and yeah, the processing seems very good. Now, one thing that is really standing out to me, and that is how smooth the image is. Now, not everyone likes a real smooth image. Some people like it a bit, you know, juddery and God knows what. Me, I like motion smoothing. And this is really, really good. So if you like motion smoothing, this could be the TV for you. Now, moving around to the side, obviously being an OLED TV, we are gonna get those amazing viewing angles and it doesn't disappoint, look at that. Maintaining that amazing image, even when we come really far around. So yeah, image-wise, so far, so good. Swapping out the image now to some 4K HDR material. And sadly, we do not get a logo pop up in the corner to indicate that we are watching HDR material. But if I actually just go into the settings and show you guys, as you can see, it is saying, we are watching HDR, but yeah, nothing to indicate on the screen when it actually is playing, which I think is a bit of a letdown. I do like that, and I know a lot of other people like that as well. But yeah, showing this darker scene here with some nice bright areas, we can see why OLEDs really shine. Look at those amazing black levels against those real bright areas there. You know, this is what you get from an OLED TV. Oh, you gotta love OLED TVs, aren't you? They are just mega. That brightness is coming through very well there. Like I say, not the brightest OLED out there, I would say, but I think most people would be happy. Obviously, I test a lot of TVs, so I've seen some extremely bright OLEDs in my time, but the average person is gonna be happy. Right, let's finally test out the sound of this TV. So we fired up a bit of Call of Duty on the PlayStation 5, and let's turn up the volume. So uh, starting off there at 26, working our way up. 
Well, it's got a fair bit of volume to it. Uh, I wouldn't say it sounds the best if I'm being totally honest. And don't get me wrong, it's not the worst that I've ever heard. Far from it. But I was expecting a little bit better than that. So let's just go into the settings and see if we can make it any better. So in the sound mode settings then, we go down to theatre. Then music. Speech. Late night, which obviously is going to be a bit quieter. And then sports. So I think music sounds the best, but even then, going back to standard, uh, I was expecting a little bit more. Well, there you have it then, guys. Now, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments section. Do you think things like the premium build quality, that amazing remote control, be it very long indeed? Also, things like the built-in hard drive. Do you think they warrant the premium price tag of this TV? Now, if you're wondering what that price tag is, then please check out the link in the description to Peter Tyson, who were kindly sent over this TV, which has allowed me to make this video. And whilst you're over there, even if you aren't looking to buy this TV, go and check out their other stuff. Hey, and give me some suggestions of things that you'd like to see me test out on the channel. Amps and speakers, amps and speakers. So yeah, once again, big thanks to Peter Tyson. And if you have enjoyed today's video, do us a favor, give me a thumbs up. Only takes a second, really helps the channel out. And subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this in the future. So thanks very much for joining me today and hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye for now.